Oh, Piper has a new puppy and he's running away. It all began when... Piper's new puppy was playing ball in the paddock with Spark. <laughs> His name was Scamper. And already, Scamper and Spark had become best friends. Whatever horsey thing Spark did, Scamper tried his puppy best to do too. If Spark trotted, Scamper trotted. If Spark jumped, Scamper jumped. <laughs> Go Spark and Scamper! Chuckled Piper as she cheered them on. All of a sudden, Scamper ran out of the paddock and turned his head to look back at Piper and Spark. <laughs> Come back, Scamper! Cried Piper. But to her surprise, Scamper didn't stop. He wants us to follow him, declared Piper as she hopped on to Spark. Come on, boy, said Piper. Let's follow that puppy. They crossed a bridge into the woods, but Piper couldn't see Scamper anywhere. Hmm, where could he have gone? Piper wondered. As they reached a pretty flower meadow, Piper spotted Scamper chasing a butterfly. There's Scamper, she said, pointing. Giddy up, boy! But instead of going faster, Spark suddenly froze. That's when Piper remembered that Spark was afraid of butterflies. <laughs> Don't worry, Spark, Piper said gently as she dismounted. We can do this together. Piper used the reins to guide Spark to the other side of the meadow. Great job, Spark, said Piper. Now let's find Scamper. Spark neighed excitedly <laughs> as he spotted Scamper ahead, holding something shiny. <gasps> I see him too, Spark, Piper said. But what has he found? <laughs> it's Spark's favorite grooming brush, cried Piper, amazed. Clever pup! <laughs> Scamper wagged his tail. And then Scamper ran away. Again! Piper and Spark followed Scamper to a fallen tree. And this time, Scamper didn't run away. As Piper got closer, she could hear a little squeaking sound. Piper then realized why Scamper had brought them here. <gasps> Mr. Chippy is trapped under that tree! gasped Piper. Okay, team, said Piper. You know what we have to do. <laughs> we have to save Mr. Chippy. Whoop! Spark and Scamper worked together to help Piper pull on a big branch until Mr. Chippy was free. Hooray! shouted Piper. <laughs> we did it! As Mr. Chippy waved goodbye, Scamper jumped into Piper's arms. What a good pup! Now we know why you wanted us to follow you, said Piper. But promise you won't run away like that again! Whoop! Back at the stable, Scamper watched as Piper brushed Spark's mane. Whoop, whoop! Piper flashed a playful smile at Spark. Hmm, I wonder what Scamper wants, <laughs> she said. Spark neighed and nuzzled Piper. You're right, Piper agreed as she started to brush the happy puppy. I think Scamper wants to be just like you. The end. Oh no, the ponies are on the stable roof and Piper is in a forest of giant flowers. How did this happen? It all started when... Piper and her pony pals Paloma and Casey were playing ball with their ponies when Piper spotted something very strange on the stable roof. Look, said Piper, it's Giddy Goat, Mama Rabbit, and Mr. Chippy. I wonder how they got up there, said Casey. Suddenly, Spark picked up a tiny wand lying in the grass and tossed it to Tuck, who threw it to Raina. The ponies neighed in delight at their new game. <laughs> Until... Zip, zap, poof, poof! All three ponies disappeared! Oh no! Cried Piper. Where have our ponies gone? Maybe they've become invisible! Suggested Paloma. Aw, oh, no fair! Said Casey. I want to be invisible! But the ponies had not become invisible. They were on the stable roof too! Now what are we 
we going to do? Said Piper. If magic got them up there, said Paloma, picking up the tiny wand, maybe magic can get them down. With a swish of the wand and a pony shazam, the animals disappeared from the stable roof. <laughs> Yay! I did it! yelped Paloma. But the animals did not reappear. Ah, uh, don't worry, Casey said. I'm great at magic too. And with another swish of the wand, zip zap kapoof! Giddy Goat, Mama Rabbit, Mr. Chippy, and the three ponies were all beside the kids. But instead of being at the stable, they were now in a forest of giant flowers. As Piper and her friends started to explore, a little voice made them jump. It was a flower fairy. Hip hip hooray, you found my wand said the flower fairy. I thought I'd lost it in the pond. I'm glad your wand isn't lost, but I think we are, said Piper. Where did all these giant flowers come from? The flowers around you are as they should be. It's magic that's made you as tiny as me, explained the flower fairy. You and your friends haven't gone far, said the flower fairy. Beside the stable is where you are. So we're super small? Gasped Casey excitedly. Cool! But will we stay tiny forever? Asked Paloma. Oh, goodness no. Just tell me when and I will make you big again said the flower fairy. But first, let's have some petal cake. With a pinch of magic, it's easy to bake. And with a swish of her wand, the flower fairy made a delicious looking cake appear. After finishing their slice of petal cake, it was time for Piper, Paloma, and Casey to go home. Come back soon, said the flower fairy. And with a magical zip zap kapoof, the flower fairy made the kids, the ponies, and their animal pals turn back to exactly the right size. It's good to be big again, <laughs> said Casey. Sure is, Paloma agreed. So, what should we do now? Mm, how about another adventure? Casey suggested. That sounds like a pony-tastic idea, said Paloma. Piper smiled. Then what are we waiting for? Let's ride, said Piper, as the three best friends set off in search of their next ponytail. The end. Piper, Paloma, and Casey couldn't find the royal fairy ponies anywhere. Stay tuned for The Very Naughty Elf. I think our pony pals are as excited as we are. Paloma said as they walked through the forest. Time to put on our fairy wings, chirped Piper. We're going to the fairy festival! Piper was pretending to flutter like a fairy when two real fairies suddenly appeared from the forest in a panic. The royal fairy ponies are missing, said one of the fairies. Royal fairy ponies always pull the king and queen's carriage, the fairy continued. <laughs> Without them, there won't be a fairy festival, ah! squeaked the other fairy. Don't worry, little fairies, said Piper. We're here to help. You can count on us, added Paloma. And our ponies, said Casey. The ponies all neighed in agreement. <laughs> the kids looked all over the forest. Behind rocks, in bushes, even up trees. But they couldn't find the royal fairy ponies anywhere. Just as the kids were starting to lose hope, Tuck's ears perked up. 
Then Reyna sniffed the air, and Spark pointed with his hoof to an old oak tree. From their hiding place, the kids and their ponies could hear a happy voice singing. Everyone calls me the naughty elf. I'm really naughty, just see for yourself. I like to play tricks on lots of folks. But don't get upset, cause they're just jokes. <laughs> Hello, said Piper, making the elf jump. Well, what? Uh, who are you? Uh, I, I didn't do it, the elf blurted out. Mm, what didn't you do? asked Paloma. Uh, nothing, nothing, said the elf, pacing. But uh, I especially did not let the royal fairy ponies out of their stables and leave them in the bluebell meadow. The elf continued. The elf stopped pacing and looked at the kids, who all burst out laughing. <laughs> Soon after, the elf took them to where the royal fairy ponies were still munching happily on some long green grass. I'm sorry, said the elf. I just like playing jokes on people. <laughs> the elf looked sad and started to walk away when Piper got an idea. <gasps> Would you like to come to the fairy festival with us? She asked. The elf smiled his biggest smile ever. <gasps> yes, please! <laughs> he replied, excited. The fairy king and queen invited the elf to join them in the royal carriage. The elf was so grateful that he promised never to be naughty again. Everyone cheered, hooray, hooray! and nay, <laughs> as the fairy festival was a big success. The end. Piper the Sky Rider. A Piper's Ponytails Storybook by Alexander Barr. I wonder what adventure we'll find today, said Piper as she rode through the woods on the back of her best pony pal, Spark. They galloped under some trees and spotted Mr. Chippy playing peekaboo in his favorite log. I can see you, Mr. Chippy, Piper said. They trotted quietly past Mrs. Deer, who didn't like loud noises. Good morning, Mrs. Deer, Piper whispered. And they cantered around a pretty flower patch, where Mama Rabbit and her baby rabbits were hopping about playfully. Looking really happy, or should I say, really hoppy, Mama and baby rabbits. <laughs> Piper said, chuckling. Piper spotted a fallen tree blocking their path ahead. Uh-oh, said Piper. But instead of slowing down, Spark let out a determined neigh and picked up speed. Are you sure we're ready to make a jump, that big boy? Asked Piper nervously. Spark neighed again and nodded. <laughs> All right then, Spark. Let's do this! Spark jumped over the log in a single, huge leap. <laughs> Piper squealed with delight. We can fly! But just then, Piper noticed something very peculiar. The bumpy ride through the forest was suddenly very unbumpy, and the forest was now far, far below. Great pony paddocks! shouted Piper. We really are flying! Spark neighed a worried sounding neigh. Ooh. I don't know how this happened either, boy, said Piper, smiling broadly. But it's kind of super skytastic! Piper grabbed Spark's reins tightly and steered him into a field of fluffy white clouds. 
Let's see what these Sky Riders can do! Piper expertly avoided cloud after cloud, first going left, then right, over and over, until they were galloping through clear blue skies again. cried Piper, giggling with joy. Just then, Piper noticed something in the distance. Look over there, Spark, said Piper. A horse with wings and a horn! <laughs> Spark neighed excitedly. You're right, Spark! It's a flying unicorn, replied Piper. Let's follow it and see where it's going. Giddy up, boy! Spark and Piper followed the unicorn's golden trail that glittered like magical fireflies. The flying unicorn led them to an amazing kingdom in the sky, where in front of a very grand palace, more winged unicorns stood beside the most beautiful unicorn of all, wearing a crown. Piper patted Spark, who neighed quizzically as they got closer. Just let me do the talking, Spark, said Piper reassuringly. But Piper secretly had no idea what she was going to say. Suddenly, she started speaking very fast. Hello, unicorns of the sky. My name is Piper, and, and this is Spark. We usually ride through the forest, waving at cute animals and jumping over logs, but um, today, it looks like we learned how to fly. <laughs> so here we are. There were a few moments of silence before all the unicorns burst out laughing. <laughs> Said one of the unicorns. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Piper and Spark looked at each other, confused. But it's true. Said Piper. The unicorn with the crown stepped forward and looked at the others. That's enough, she said. All the unicorns stopped laughing. Piper and Spark, I am the Unicorn Queen, she continued. Welcome to the Unicorn Kingdom. Piper and Spark listened closely as the Unicorn Queen explained how it was her magical spell that had given them the power to fly all the way to the Unicorn Kingdom. And all because the unicorns really needed Piper and Spark's help. Help with what? Piper asked. But before the Unicorn Queen could answer, a dragon swooped down and grabbed the crown off her head with its sharp talons and flew away with it. Look out! cried Piper, pointing at the green scaly dragon. But it was too late. As quickly as he had appeared, the dragon flew into some clouds and was gone. And with him, the unicorn queen's crown. Your majesty! gasped Piper, approaching the unicorn queen. Are you okay? The unicorn queen nodded and smiled at Piper. Quite all right, thank you, she replied. But now you know why we need your help. I am told you have a way with dragons, like you do with ponies. Oh, we'd totally love to help, but that's a big crown-stealing dragon, and we're more used to the little cute dragon who lives under the bridge. The green dragon keeps taking things that don't belong to him. We need to know why. And we would like our things back. The Unicorn Queen then sounded sad as she added, That crown has been in my family for a very long time. Piper hopped back onto her saddle and whispered into Spark's ear, What do you think, Spark? Are you up for a sky-riding dragon adventure? <laughs> Spark neighed and nodded, yes. Ooh. Great! Me too, boy! said Piper. And with that, Spark reared up heroically before galloping skywards. Follow that dragon! cried Piper. 
and into the clouds they disappeared. After what seemed like a very long time, Piper and Spark reached the dark entrance to a cave, shaped just like a dragon's mouth. Ooh. This must be where the dragon thief lives, Piper said to Spark in her teeniest, tiniest voice. So let's be as quiet as a pair of mice, or he might hear us. Piper got off Spark and began to tiptoe. Behind her, Spark did his best to tiptoe as well. Only the closer they got to the dragon's cave, the louder Spark's teeth started to chatter. I know things can seem scary sometimes, Spark, Piper said, but the unicorns are counting on us, so we have to be extra brave. But just as Piper was showing Spark how to be extra brave, a terrible wailing sound made them both jump. <laughs> what was that? Asked Piper, alarmed. Piper peeked inside the cave and lo and behold, there was the dragon. And on top of the dragon's head sat the unicorn queen's crown. <laughs> cried the dragon as big dragon tears rolled down his big dragon cheeks. Piper stepped into the cave, suddenly feeling braver than before. Oh, what's wrong? Piper asked the dragon. Uh, well, I've got this shiny new crown and lots of fun toys, but no one to play kings and queens with. <laughs> Sobbed the dragon. Oh, cheer up, Mr. Dragon, said Piper in her cheeriest voice. I'm Piper and this is Spark, and we know exactly who you can play with. Follow us, she cried, and with that, Piper jumped onto Spark's back and rode out of the cave into the big blue sky. The dragon stopped crying and smiled a big toothy dragon smile as he called out, <laughs> Wait for me! As they all reached the Unicorn Kingdom, the unicorns looked alarmed at the sight of the dragon chasing after Piper and Spark. But on landing, Piper was quick to explain. The Unicorn Queen just wants her crown and other things back, and Mr. Dragon just wants someone to play kings and queens with. So, all you have to do is play together! Before long, the Unicorn Queen's crown was back on her head where it belonged. And beside her, the dragon was now also wearing his very own crown. Piper took part in the game, curtsying playfully. Your Majesties are looking so very royal today, said Piper. The dragon adjusted his crown proudly. Thank you, Lady Piper, replied the dragon, for showing me that asking to play with others is better than taking things from others to play with on my own. Soon after, it was time to go, and Piper waved goodbye as she and Spark rode the rainbow all the way from the Unicorn Kingdom back down to the forest where their big adventure had started. It's good to be back on the ground, boy, said Piper, as Spark neighed in agreement and galloped <laughs> down the same path they had taken earlier that day. Where should we go next? <laughs> Spark neighed again loudly, and Piper chuckled. <laughs> That's a great idea, Spark, said Piper. 
Let's go home. The end. Watch Piper's videos and play with Piper's toys at home.